Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VI. At the start of this episode, I'm going to do a little bit of post-commentary to show off some of the gameplay um, I've done between episodes. Obviously, we have a lot of grind going on. Uh, the Cursed Shield I have not cleansed yet. Um, I've read that a really good place to do it again is on the Solitary Island, because those things just kill themselves, so, so you just stand there. But apparently it could take up to three hours grinding like the more i've read about it the more it sounds like just an insanely difficult thing to do and it takes ages and ages and ages and ages and ages to break the curse so i don't know uh anyway um what i also wanted to do was grind for a bunch of these abilities so actually i've put together what i think is going to be a really cool team to fight the dragons eventually so i have Locke, who i'm thinking can steal i have setsu i'm thinking will roll billions of dice terra who can spam ultima mog who can be a dragoon and i really ummed and ahed between whether i wanted to do mog or Edgar. I've picked Mog. Apparently his stat pool, something about the fact that he comes in at a slightly higher level or something the way that Espers interact with him. He can get really defensive against physical attacks or something. So I've picked Mog for now. I don't know whether this really will be my A team, uh, so to speak. It's a bit like in 10, you know, where the best characters are the ones that can do multi packets of damage. And Terra's not really there, but she does have Trance. So trancing ultimas and stuff might be fun if these bosses have loads of magic defense anyway I, so i wanted to learn re-raise i wanted to learn hastesia check this out i just killed a cactar there and learned a bunch of spells because look cactars give you 10 ap and 10,000 gil but no xp so this is kind of a faint another famous way you can grind in six i'm really trying to show it all off here uh killing cactars so i've put the sniper's eye on setzer he just rolls some dice and then we kill a Cactar, and it doesn't turbocharge our levels, but it does give us insane amounts of AP. And I've spent probably about half an hour in this desert here. Oh yeah, and then there's these, the Slagworms. They cast like Sandstorm and blow your guys up. So these are really horrible, but if you find a Cactar, it's excellent. They only have like three health, and um, you know, it's just a huge reward. Loads of gill, not that I'm sure I really, really even know what I want to do the gill with anymore. Um, but I'll be able to throw it, actually. We're going to use Throw Gill on Shadow in a minute. So, yeah, I did a lot of grinding for Hastesia, for Re-Raise, for Ultima, all the big badass new stuff. And uh, speaking of Sandstorms, these deaths, Setsa was constantly dying. Listen to this sound effect for Re-Raise. Uh, sorry, Arise, the 100% heal. It's super cool, right? I've never really heard that before. I'm so used to the nostalgic sound effects of the other things. So I thought I'd show that off because it's a different sound effect out of combat. But, um, yeah, so if you look at this list, wow. That's a lot of stars, right? Actually, learning the early ones was really easy. I specifically didn't give them Alexander, Bahamut, because other people are learning those. But Quetzale for Hastesia, Phoenix for Re-Raise, Ragnarok for Ultima. Those are like the big, really important ones. And I wanted each character to have them so that no matter whose turn goes first, I can Hastesia the team. Then there's Kate Sith. So I started learning this because, you know, while some people were grinding the harder ones, other people went to the easy ones. So I made sure to give Kate Sith to all these guys as well. So they all have Imp. And I've been thinking for a while now that I want to go back to those Tonbris in a box. Well, now that we have Ultima, which is a big recommended way of fighting them, and we can put Imp on everyone, I'm going to go and fight those in this episode. Um, so yeah. Oh, also here, I'm checking out, I just talked about, uh, Throw Gill. Uh, I was looking at Setsa and thinking about his unique item, because obviously he has the fixed dice, but that's just a weapon. What about a unique relic, relic for him? And remember we got this, like, a while ago now? The Heiji's Jit. And if you see down here at the bottom here, it says that this changes the gill, um, the slot command to Giltos, an exotic weapon from a foreign land. Uh, well, we haven't really used that. And since while grinding here, I just got a bunch of money. Look, we have, what is that? 6,213,000? No, no, no. It's 621,000 gil. We got a lot of gil. So I'm going to start using Giltos. I'll use the animation like once or twice. At the end of the day, you spend money to do a bit of damage, like this armor ignoring or whatever. But, you know, we're rolling the dice anyway, and it does so much more. Just a little bit, again, of the weird balance. Also, in this game, you don't key in specific amounts of gil which is a bit of a shame. So I want to kill the Tombreeze in a box at the start of this episode. The other thing I want to do here is to fight the Zone Eater and actually kill it. I don't know, just something about killing the big bad boss on this island after we met the Intangia here. <laughs> I feel like I want to do. Uh, obviously, we're in a time limit if we go for this, um, but I assumed it was possible because he's just going to be inhaling us like real fast. So here's what I go for. Um, Haste you're on the team. And look at all these spells that we have to actually mouse through now. It's absolutely crazy. It's a shame because you'd think on a remaster port release for the PC or whatever, they could expand stuff like this. Like basic UI improvements doesn't take away from the nostalgia or anything like that. Like that 
Um, and in that way, I'm pretty disappointed by this remaster, to be honest. So I go for a re-raise there, but it doesn't matter because re-raise won't save you if you're being ejected from the battle. Which is quite ironic since this is the first time we're actually trying to cast it. The re-raise animation, by the way, is just like it is in the later games. It's the angels, the golden angels that come down like next to you. So there you go. Here's Ultima, our first ever Ultima cast. Looks pretty badass. Very similar. I mean, Gao kind of ruins a lot of this stuff, though, because he's already done so many amazing spells. And uh, he died in one Ultima, so he's not even that tanky, really. He gets this really insane, massive, like, long boss death animation. Well, there you go. Uh, just for my own satisfaction, killing the Zone Eater there. And yes, he swallowed a couple of us and we killed it. Did that mean we ultimate our own friends and they're gone for good? No, no, no. They just pop back up into your party. So that's one thing. The next thing is heading to Nash and finding the Tombreeze in a box, which is a huge long walk. So I'm just going to cut it out. So here we are, uh, and I believe it or not, I struggled to find this door again. It's because it's surrounded by the holes in the floor or whatever. Tom Breeze box. So remember, we're supposed to get great loot out of this, right? This is three Tom Breeze at once. Plan here, though, as I mentioned before, is they're all vulnerable to imp. So uh, the first person to get a turn here is Locke, which is good. Locke actually doesn't do that much damage at the moment. He's easily the weakest character on this team. But I'm kind of saying it's okay because he steals sometimes too. Um, you know, with a Thief's Knife, but the Thief's Knife does almost nothing, and everything's so evasive. So anyway, they go for some basic attacks. We manage to survive. We get a Hastiesia up. Then I go, I throw a Re-Raise out. Now, doing that on Terra when she could Ultima instead is maybe a questionable decision. Um, but I want at least one Re-Raise. So remember the mechanic here is these guys, like, they cast Traveler on you. Uh, like, they counter with that, which just does absolutely crazy damage, and they're slowly advancing on you, and if they hit you with a knife, they do obscene damage as well. Um, but here, so everybody has imp. So Mog can imp. And you see how long it takes me to mouse around and actually find the damn thing. I really feel like these bottom, you know, they've got like the black orbs and then the white orbs. These gray ones at the bottom, I wish they were green or something. Anyway, so there's an imp on a Tombri. And there's another imp. And this is cool, because what other reason have we had to use imp as we played through here? And suddenly they're missing with all their attacks. It says no effect. Sets to get to dodge there. There's his guild toss, by the way, his command, you can see. Um, and so now we can just go ham, really. So I execute a jump with Mog. I go with an Ultima. And to be honest, after how quickly the Zoni had just died and how squishy stuff seems to be in the World of Balance, sorry, the World of Ruin, uh, I was kind of thinking to myself, oh, uh, do you think one Ultima is going to finish these off? And this was really excessive. Like, we're overpowered now. By the way, our levels haven't gone up that much. We're now in, like, the mid to high 40s. So we're climbing up a bit, you know. We're nearing 50s, and then after that, 60s, and then 70s, and we can fight the dragons. I don't know. <laughs> but people do very low level runs. I'm thinking we're going to fight those dragons at a very low level. Oh, by the way, so there you can see we hit lock. Uh, they hit lock and did a bomber damage. So they can still bite back, and they survive the ultima. So this does seem like a very difficult fight. Look at all the turns that they're getting. And if they were able to just execute their normal stuff and they weren't imps right now, it would be horrifying. Mog low rolled on his jumps there. I'm sure he only got two procs. But there, another Ultima, they de-imp, they die. Mo oh yeah, I didn't fully learn, learn the last spell, it was just so much grind, guys. But there you go, Mog learned a rise out of that last 5 AP. And it said no items, no XP, no gill, no items, it says it's empty. Well, hold on, I thought we were supposed to get good stuff from these fights. So here's a really weird fit, and I was frustrated by this. When I looked at my items immediately later, though, I did find there's this now. The Valiant Knife, a knife that grows in power as his wielder's HP dwindles. I think we probably got that from the Tombreeze. Now, that's attack 1. Uh, 145. Believe it or not, Locke already got a better knife than that. That was the Maneater. Okay, so we can dual wield these, which is what I'm going to do. But the Maneater is 146, ever so slightly better. So it was kind of a lame reward, really. The Maneater is a very special thing that I read about when I was looking into Gao stuff a couple of episodes back. Um, the Maneater does obscene damage if you're fighting like a humanoid. Um... And the weird thing there is if you rage Gao into a humanoid and then friendly fire attack him with a man eater, you will get the damage buff. But why would you ever do that? <laughs> so there you go. So I'm going to use the man eater and this new Tonbury knife together um, just so the lock has a little bit of damage. And that's our reward, I guess, for this monster in a box. I'm happy to have opened it and completed this little bit of the game. But there you have it. So for one final thing, now this really is where things get quite interesting. Um... The other thing I've kind of had on my notes that I want to do at the start of a lot of these episodes is Shadow. 
Remember, we can sleep in the inns and just get a little bit more of his story. So that's what I'm going to do next to sort of cap off this opening montage thing. And uh, this I thought would be very small. You know, I almost thought it wouldn't have been too much of a loss to the LP to not have seen these. But I thought, you know, let's do everything. So um, I'm really glad I did because, wow, there was a lot to unravel here. It's live commentary, so I'll pass you over. I'm just going to go to an inn. So this is actually the inn at Miranda, right near where I was grinding for the cactus. I think it was Miranda uh, in that desert. And I slept in the bed like five times and nothing happened. So I didn't think it was going to proc. I didn't even have my mic near me. Oh, we got it. We got it. Barham says, Yahoo, we did it, Clyde. Nice. So that, were they just on the ghost train? A million gil. What a blast. This is the life. So they're thieves. They're partners in crime, right? Guess it's time we thought of a name, huh? A name, says Clyde. I really wish we could get this design for him, man. Uh, all good bandit duos need a name. I uh, sort of have one in mind. Well, let's hear it. The Shadow Bandit. Oh, this is why he picks the name Shadow. What do you think? Not bad, eh? Oh, he just vanished. The Shadow Bandits. Great train robbers of the century. They get a lot of value out of that train, eh? They managed to get it back in the, um, the uh, science stuff and here. Oh, nice. That was a good little one. I was about to give up hope that that was actually going to work. So even here now, I was thinking, eh, maybe I'll stop doing this. Maybe we'll just get another random shadow cutscene like way later. But I thought, you know, actually, let's just do it now. So I leave the door. You know, let's let's see it all if we can. I leave the door, go back in and out. And I don't even know, you know, maybe you need to go out to the airship. Maybe you need shadow to leave your party completely and then add him back to proc this. But I, I just spam it as many times as possible. And well, as you can see, we get another one. Awesome. We got another one. Open it. Wait, what is he talking to here? Open your eyes. Oh, he's hurt. They did. They robbed a train and they got hurt. How bad is it? This this isn't my blood, is it, Clyde? Oh, we're doing like a war movie scene. Don't worry, you're going to be okay. I'm sorry, I, I let my guard down. Don't talk, the town's just a bit farther. Oh, this is this one of those scenes we saw when we were at the trench. Were we on the raft before? And we just sailed past this screen? I think we did, actually. You don't have to pretend, I know. I know, this is my blood, isn't it? I'm done for. Get going, leave me here, I'll only slow you down. Oh, and he, Clyde steps back. You want to get caught? Yeah, look, you're outlaws. You've got no recourse, you know, even if you get to the town. Before you go, I have a favour to ask. Please, finish me off with your knife. Oh, my God. How could you ask me to do something like that? You know what they'll do to me if they catch me alive. I don't want to go through that. Touch my arm. Is it the arm injured? Feel it shaking. I've never been afraid in my life. And now I'm quivering like a leaf. Please, before I wet myself and have to die a coward, just take your knife. And, like, I really like the idea of this. This is very grim and realistic and gritty, but it's so left field. Just take your knife and... Do we get a knife out of this? I can't do it. Do we get to come back here and find a chest with a knife in it? Clyde! Oh, does he just run away and leave him? I'm sorry. Oh... It's crazy, and then later he becomes just like some mercenary. I just read an amazing post online where, this is weird, I'm going to have to edit in a black and white section when the game itself is already black and white. But I just read an amazing post online where the first thing you ever hear from Shadow in this game uh, is like some quote that he would kill even his best friend for the right price. Well, look, it's kind of referential to this little moment, right? Clyde, how could you? Oh, he leaves his body there? Oh, that can't be the last one. Surely not. All right, I'm going to keep doing these. Wow, and he still has dreams of them. Oh, they, this guy's cool. He don't, barely speaks. You barely get any sense of what's going on with him. And yet his entire backstory is in his own mind. None of these other players in the party learn any of this, you know? He's just haunted by it. I'm glad we're getting Shadow's story. There's quite a lot here. I didn't realize, actually. I knew there were little cutscenes, but damn. I guess the fact it's not a playable dungeon or, like, sequence with battles makes it seem like this is le of lesser note to the others. But this is, this is his, the second half of his story, you know? This is better than Locke's, for example. Locke is just opening chests in Nosh. Oh, here we go. Wow, it, is it every three? I oh, find this is Intercept. Is this him meeting the dog? I love this courtyard with the tree here. Well, hey there, stranger. Hey, are you all right? Anything you like? That's the line from, uh, oh God, what's her name? 
the the girl with the massive boobs at the gas station at the start of 15. Uh, Cindy, I think it was. Anything you like? She says that over and over and over as you tune up the car. Well, where am I? Sorry, that's irrelevant to all this. In a small village called Thur- Thursa. Come on now, pull yourself together. Thamasa, why is she centred the M? I don't know why she has this accent. Nobody in Thamasa has that. Okay, so they clean him up. Oh, this is a very short one. Is that it? Wait, so what is it? Are we doing a whole... Okay, so I'm guessing Barum is dead. And he's starting a new life. Is that her dog? And then maybe... Maybe she's going to die as well and the dog will stay with him and the dog's all he's got left. This is basically a precursor to John Wick. And then, but in, Interceptor's alive here. That's not a John Wick spoiler before anyone goes on to me there. The dog dies at the very beginning of John Wick. It, it, it's like the essence of the entire first movie. And then the second movie is a masterclass in subtle world building. And then three is just whatever. <laughs> I think I watched four and I wasn't too into that one either. Come on, Clyde. Give me another dream. I must piece together your backstory. Do we get an item from this or something? Do we get to turn the throw command into something else? Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no special relic for him uh, that changes throw into something else. Uh, as far as his most interesting gear, he's got an amazing weapon, which you kill, which you get from like Flan Princess bosses in the GBA version or Colosseum for us. And there's also some strat where you bet shurikens at the uh, Colosseum and it upgrades them to better ones, but it takes ages. This is so weird. I wasn't expecting to do like this big commentary section. I actually, this is weird, guys. I've never done this before. I actually have a YouTube video, or I'm not listening to it really. It's very quiet. Auto playing on another monitor right now. Um, so it's kind of YouTubeception. You guys are watching me on YouTube while I'm watching someone else on YouTube. They should also be watching someone on YouTube. That's why, but it's because there's a new, uh, a new setting in OBS, which means it will, uh, you could have done this in the past, but it was a, a lot trickier. It will capture just the audio from the one app, which, uh, is pretty handy. But, uh, yeah, ah, come on, we need another one. It's definitely not every three. Maybe we just got lucky before. Also, I don't know whether going in and out of this door is necessary, but I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, is that it? Really? Is that the last one? Okay, so I I spent an excessive amount of time going in and out of this inn, hoping something would proc. I didn't want to look anything up online because, you know, spoilers or whatever. I want to experience it for real. Um, you know, I'm happy to read about mechanics stuff, but come on. So I kept doing this for far too long. Man, we have paid this innkeeper so much money now. I've just read online that if we'd done this at Figaro, Doma, or Mobles, the beds would have been free. And at Thamasa, they only pay you a gill. <laughs> so, but you know, I'm happy to make this guy rich. You can have all my cactile money. Why not? Until finally I gave up and properly read about it. And, uh, woo, there's a lot to say. Okay, so I'm going to keep running in and out of this bed here. I have just read a bomb of information online. A bomb. There's, there's, there's too much trivia here. Okay, you know how if Shadow died, I told you that Realm gets the dog, that Realm ends up in the cave? Yeah, there seems to be a little bit more significance to that. So we've seen all the dreams. There's four, and they have a 50% chance to proc. We saw one in a previous episode. We've just seen the other three here. I think they're supposed to be random in the order you get them. And yet, um, I think I kind of got lucky and sort of got them in order a little bit here. So that's the four dreams you can get. There is a fifth, which we already saw when we rescued him from the cave. And that was the moment he left Thamasa, which you may vaguely remember. I vaguely remember. He abandoned that lady we just saw. And, you know, maybe over guilt, over what had happened to Barum, or maybe the authorities were after him. Who knows? But he left. But he had a kid there. He had a kid at Thamasa. Okay, so here's where it gets really crazy. And some of you guys will have known this for a while, and you would have been bursting me to hopefully figure this out. Well, I... <laughs> I can't believe this. Apparently, so they hint there that he had a daughter at Thamasa. Now, what's a little girl we know at Thamasa? Realm. Realm who gets the dog if Shadow dies. Also, apparently, if Realm is um, 
uh, if, if Shadow dies and Realm's in your team and you sleep or something, she has a dream as well. There's a sixth dream. You, you can never see in one playthrough because obviously Shadow's either alive or dead. But in the sixth dream, you get a little bit more about this. But basically, Shadow is Realm's dad. There's this whole thing about how Stray goes the granddad. That's like non-biological though, like that she's adoptive or whatever, right? Stray, uh, Shadow really does seem to be her dad. Now, they don't fully spell it out for you. Um, if we look in the inventory here, right, we can equip a relic to Shadow, right? And when we got Realm, Realm had this item here equipped on her. If you remember me looking at this, the, the Memento Ring, a ring blessed by a departed mother's love. So this is like Realm's mum's item or whatever. It's, it's an heirloom from Realm's mother. And only Realm can equip this in the whole game. She, that's her item. She comes with it already. It's an heirloom for her. Only she can equip it out of all the characters. Except also Shadow. Shadow randomly is allowed to equip the Memento Ring as well. Uh, which hints, you know, there's, there's that woman we saw in the cutscene. So, yeah, there, there's lot, like a lot of hints that he's the dad. And um, they don't really talk about it in the party, I suppose. I suppose it comes down to this thing, like, he didn't really raise her or didn't get to know her. He'd abandoned her. So maybe the other party members don't consider him a real dad. Maybe they don't even realize and I believe it was subtle for years and kind of a fan theory-ish thing. I'll sleep one more time, because why not? Um, but in an outside interview, like the game director or whatever did say, yeah, he's the dad. And again, in the Game Boy Advance version, they change one of the cutscenes. I think he's going to generically talk to us about family at some point near the end of the game. In the Game Boy Advance version, he specifically talks about his daughter. Also, talking about cut content in the game... Uh, the devs confirmed they had an idea for a scene where Strago was talking to Shadow. Those two characters we don't usually see interact. But, you know, Strago has a vested interest in Realm. And the idea is they're at a bar and Strago no wants to know, is it Clyde really under there? Because Shadow's always wearing a mask. So he gets him to take the mask off and reveal who he really is. But uh, none of that was added in the end. And maybe for a good reason, because you if they just do a random little scene like that, and then continue to have Shadow hiding with a mask on instead of talking to his daughter. That comes across as a bit weird. Including that one scene would have necess necessitated a lot more other scenes properly finishing this story off. Also, in the PlayStation edition of this, they added like some cutscene on the ghost train sequence where you're first with Shadow and all these ghosts are haunting the guys. And for apparently like one frame, there's a picture of Realm there. <laughs> When it's Shadow, you know, haunting Shadow, which again is like that that's his kid. Oh, also, there's a huge theory out there that Barum, the guy Shadow abandoned, that's Kefka. That he survives somehow and then, you know, goes on to become Kefka in the future, which is also an amazing theory. Actually, to me, talking about cut content, it sort of feels like this is an unfinished plot point in a lot of ways. Like, they don't resolve the realm stuff, but uh, um, Barum just being left there, doesn't it kind of feel like, you know, here in the world of Ruin, we should get a quest to go find out what happened to him, find out he turned into a monster or a monster's hunting him or something? Um, but none of that was ever actually added. So, wow, Shadow is realm's... Uh, dad, and it's really hidden. <laughs> and I just learned about that, like, looking it up, because the last, what well, I thought might be the last cutscene wouldn't proc. Wow, you really have to investigate and look at that. That is, that is awesome. Uh, very, very, very cool. And I guess that means we've seen all the Shadow stuff, actually. Um, I saw a bit of discussion just now as well, of people saying it's a bad ending because he abandons the kid and all that kind of stuff. I don't know, it depends how it's delivered. I, I really don't think this game is actually sophisticated enough to do stories like that well. Like, it's very ambiguous, I guess, and they just, they're very hands-off. Uh, it's not bad. You know, what was actively bad is, like, at the end of Lost with the whole Jin and Sun thing, but, you know... Anyway, uh, so there you go. So that's Shadow stuff, and uh, Jesus, wow. Um, I guess let's get on to the next thing. I wonder what I want to do. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, wasn't this a section? Okay, so for the next adventure, I thought... Well, let's look at Metamorph. Obviously, we got the Ragnarok uh, Esper in the previous part. It has this really weird ability where it casts Metamorphosis that turns enemies into items. And I thought, well, let's experiment with this. Let's play with this. Uh, see what it's all about. So I read uh, a various piece of information online. There's a pretty good Steam guide about this, listing out how it works, the best kind of items you can get around the world from using this, two of which I'm going to go for here. Now, let me state on the off, 
the information I read about this made it seem like it was a really fun, like, simple thing to do. But it's actually, like, brutal. Uh, I don't recommend using this Esper for gathering items. This was a colossal waste of time. If you can help it in any other way, don't do this. Why do none of the guides or information online easily talk about just how slow this is? This is crazy. So I did a lot of encounters for this, and I guess the lucky thing about this, at least uh, the silver lining, is... I had Strago on my team, so I made some Cursed Shield progress because he still has it equipped. But the thing is, I, I didn't really even get through that many encounters because mostly you end up in the same encounter, in the same battle for like 5, 10, or even longer minutes at a time. So what you'll actually notice here in this footage is his Doom is running out every single fight. And uh, what I actually did was I, I did the full combo of Ribbon plus Littering, so the Doom actually heals him, which was kind of nice. Um, so yeah, also in the starting footage I'm playing here, Shadow's in my team. Like I was going for a happy family thing, you know, after what we just learned, we can have them all together, Strago, Realm, and Shadow. But uh, actually, Shadow's really bad for this. Uh, or if you let Shadow die, Realm would be really bad for this uh, because of the dog countering, which messes it up, I'll explain in a second. So I had to get rid of him and I swapped Cyan in instead. Cyan is, in theory, really good for this because he has a Bushido Eclipse and what that does is that casts stop on everything and stopping all the enemies is really nice. So, uh, and then of course party member four is Gogo, -Go, who will be basically handling this mechanic. My impression going into this was that Gogo -Go using as a strat was like an optional fun bonus. No, 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 no. Look, Gogo -Go is required as far as I'm concerned. Don't do this in the first place, but if you're gonna do it, you need Gogo. -Go. So here's the deal, right? Ragnarok's an instant kill. It will, it will delete the enemy, turn it into an item, but it nearly always completely misses. I guess because it would be too overpowered if it hit too much. So it has a tiny chance of actually hitting the target. I thought it would be like 1 in 4 or something. No, no, no. Way lower than that. Well, actually, in fact, the chance that it will land changes based on the enemy that you're fighting. So, like, every enemy in the game, like, has a specific value for, like, whether Ragnarok will hit or not. Which is kind of amazing that that details in it there in the game. And what it means is, like, some, like, early game stuff, like Wolves or whatever... That they have really high chance, but they'll just drop things like potions, and that's it. So, like, who cares? You're not going to be Ragnarokking wolves. Uh, we're at the end of the game. By the time we get this thing, you're going to be Ragnarokking other stuff. And anything that's worth anything, the chances are insanely low. Like, you'll cast this Esper maybe 30 or 40 times in a single encounter before it procs. But wait, it's an Esper. So how do you cast it that many times with such a low chance for it to land? Well, the footage is speaking for itself, clearly, by using Mimic with Gogo. -Go. It's funny, Gogo -Go can just spam this, you know, summon an Esper over and over and over again. He didn't get Trance as one of his selectable abilities, presumably because, like, the devs didn't want to suggest he had this Terra-style Esper power. But he could do this, and this is, like, you know, pretty crazy Esper stuff too here. Uh, so it's utterly mad to me, the idea of doing this without Gogo -Go being able to Mimic and do it all in one battle. Like, imagine you get a random encounter, the enemy itself that you're looking for might be rare. You finally get the enemy, and then you have one chance to hit it with Ragnarok before it gets locked out. Like, that's nuts. Bring Gogo -Go with you so that you don't have to grind for the encounters, at least, as much as you otherwise would. It's funny to me, uh, if you look, Ragnarok's MP cost is really low. Like, a lot of um, espers will cost you, like, 40 MP or more. He's only eight. So, it's like the devs set his MP really low, expecting that you would spam him, forgetting at the same time that actually there's a mechanic in the game where a player can only use the Esper once. You can't even like swap who's got it equipped in the middle of a fight, right? So why is it such low MP? It's like they thought it was going to be spammable and then it wasn't. It makes me think of that cut content thing I mentioned a couple of episodes ago, where they planned for an actual summon command that you could use in-game. But it never, which would be repeatedly summoning espers, but it never made it in the end. So, what, was this made for the cut content and just ends up a bit awkward? Like, I guess a lot of Final Fantasy VI fans find this iconic and whatever, but personally, me looking at it now, I just think it's some weird half-broken thing that you have to work around. The low MP doesn't even matter for Gogo because he doesn't spend MP when mimicking, right? It's like, oh, um, so I was having Strago cast Ragnarok initially, and I was always wondering every time I did it, will he actually be the one that lands? Will I get a first-time roll? But of course not. So, you know, he has just 8 MP, and then after that, it's free. So anyway, when Ragnarok does hit, okay, there are four potential items that can come out of it. 
it's basically determined by like a family of enemies so like all birds of a certain type i guess that they'll they'll like drop potions mostly but you have a one in quarter chance out of their four potential items they probably have a good one right they're a special item and so for these birds that you see i'm grinding and trying here that special item is a growth egg so i'm go which is the double xp thing we did the crazy puzzle for you can get a bunch of growth eggs and then you know level everyone up really fast so i thought this would be a fun thing to at least show off and at least the birds aren't too rare you can get them just outside kolingen in the world of ruin so that's kind of what i'm going for here another example like with the family thing most metal themed enemies they have a chance to turn into like mithril stuff mithril equipment is really weak for where we are now but, you know, you could go for it if, if you like, I guess. You know, some enemies will drop gold items. So basically, get in a fight, spam the shit out of Ragnarok, hope it lands, and then when it finally does, pray that you get the right item. Or do it all again. Find the random encounter again and go again. It, this really reminds me of FF12, of all that crazy stuff where, like, chests have, like, a 5% chance to be rare. And then when it's rare, it's another 1% for it, for it to be the right thing or whatever. And then, then there's that totally crazy chest that's, like, uh, it doesn't even spawn 99% of the time. And when it does, it's invisible. And then when you open it, it's probably rare. And people used to actually, like listen to the sound of the clicking of the disc in the ps2 to make sure that the right uh you know they'd actually had a good role on on transitioning and trying to respawn the chest anyway this is crazy so i have actually read on a game faq forum about a guy who was trying to get all the items he possibly could in the world of balance before you can get to the world of ruin so you don't get gogo -go and you obviously can't unlock the door at nash so how did he do that he was summoning Ragnarok by throwing Magicite shards in the World of Balance. Yeah, so he has the tiniest chance to get the proc. When he gets the proc, it's the tiniest chance for it to be the right item. After actually finding the right encounter, and to even summon Ragnarok in the first place, he has to throw Magicite and hope that the right Esper spawns out of all the potential options. Like, that that's insane. Like, they're completely crazy. This isn't even in, like, the era of Twitch streaming where maybe he's sitting there and just chatting or whatever as it goes. This is before that. This is how a guy is spending his time when he gets home from work or school in the evening. That's, that's the way some people play Six. Um... Yeah, uh, I'm not going to be doing that. Well, obviously, we've already left the world of balance, but, uh, but yeah. So anyway, if we're going to be using GoGo -Go to talk a little bit about what you see here to spam Mimic, uh, if he's sp spamming Mimic to only use Metamorphose, then obviously we can't use anything else, and that's kind of where the gameplay is here. Uh, you have to sit there completely passive not doing anything else so the enemies are just going to beat you up in the meantime uh eventually they do run out of mp so you know that's okay and actually it ha they run out of mp a lot quicker than i would have expected really uh so that's where the problem with shadow is if you have shadow there he's standing there eventually he'll get hit eventually he'll dodge something and interceptor will do something like a fang attack and then go go will mimic the dog so then you're not using metamorph metamorphose anymore and you have to reset the whole thing so you kind of got to get rid of him otherwise M mimic will, will change to something else so you kind of clear enemies at the start you know put stop on them whatever and then mimic spam i had Hermes sandals on go go for this i probably should have equipped more agility stuff as well in hindsight but you never know you know it might just be one more battle and then one more cast and then you finally get it i swear when i saw that animation of the sword coming where it actually finally procced i always got so excited it's crazy just because you'd see something different on the battle screen right like the rest of the time it's just passing and seeing the random weird abilities that enemies can do and noticing that they might flee from battle sometimes sadly i couldn't even auto battle for this like i was wondering i could just tap q and it would do it for me but no then people would attack and then gogo -Go would do those other attacks i did think oh maybe i can defend on auto battle but i don't know does auto battle do that what if gogo -Go mimics the defend so i just didn't try uh try that out and uh, i manually input this in the whole way through so, skipping way ahead here uh, with the footage, here I get a growth egg and um, I uh, was very excited about this. As you can see, I I'm spamming X, like swapping their turns as much as possible. So, here you go, here's the animation procs. And uh, it speaks to you, by the way. It says, I dub the growth egg. Oh my god, I got it. Nice. Oh, there it is. To be honest. Here in the Pixel Master Remaster, with the patch that just came out, I can just go into the options and increase XP yields, not just by double for the whole party at once, but by quadruple. 
But, you know, showing this off so I can have that authentic experience. I don't necessarily regret this. I think uh, people like to get a lot of these growth eggs and then take them all to that dinosaur forest. Um, but they do it probably from the Colosseum is the smarter way. Uh, and we'll do a bit on the Colosseum um, coming up. So, and by the way, in that forest, there's a dinosaur we still haven't met yet that I think drops some good gear and some good items. So for the second item that I'm going for, we're at Zozo. I know it's on the world map, it's called Mount Zozo, even though most of the time it's just regular Zozo that we're thinking of. Anyway, uh, so this second item I'm looking for comes from these dancer enemies. You know, we've seen them in various places. And they, the fastest way to spawn them is in Zozo, in like an interior of some kind. And what I'm trying to turn these dancer ladies into is an item called the Miracle Shoes. Now, the Miracle Shoes are properly amazing. This is the coolest thing about uh, Ragnarok, I think. Um, so, these items come from nowhere else. Like, you, they're not a drop. They're not a boss drop. They're not a steal. They're not in, like, any regular chest. They're not in any hidden chest. They are nowhere in the game. You can, these will not appear for you if you just play Final Fantasy VI normally. You cannot get these items, but they are there um, when you use Metamorphosis or in the Colosseum. Again, I keep mentioning the Colosseum, and the Colosseum is probably the better method. In fact, to be honest, guys, a lot of what I see people talking about with Metamorphosis online, it's like, oh, use Metamorphosis to get the first item, and then take it to the Colosseum for, like, a big upgrade chain. But anyway, so the Miracle Shoes, it's only here, or the Colosseum. What do they give you? Auto Shell, Regen, Prot, and Haste. Oh my god, it's like all the best boons all at once. It's like the ultimate Hermes sandals. It's like what you would spend ages crafting for endgame gear in like FFX. Fantastic, and I think it would be really cool for the dragons. So I kind of want to get four of these for a whole team. Um, but I'm only getting one from Metamorphose. I'll see what I can do uh, at the Colosseum for the other ones. It doesn't look like it should be too hard. Uh, and so there you go. So that's my idea. Um, as far as a bit of trivia for some other stuff, you can get ribbons as well. Like if you, so these dancers, right? But do you remember there's just ladies out there in the world, just women that you fight sometimes like that model? That family, if you use it on those, you can get ribbons off of them. And I guess that kind of makes sense thematically. It seems like the devs really did do a theme, you know, birds dropping eggs, the ladies dropping ribbons. Um, and obviously ribbons are good. Uh, most people recommend you get the ribbons from Cyan's Dreamscape because the only other ones in the game are kind of rough and really rare to find. Like, it's like you've got to find a level 90 magic lady in the cultist tower. And she can do so much damage to you while you're standing there passive trying to metamorphose her. So, uh, you know, that's like one of the things people say. Go to the dreamscape and don't leave until you've got a bunch of ribbons. But I can't imagine anything more boring uh, just standing around there spamming uh, this. I mean, maybe the rates are slightly higher in there. I don't know. And the other thing is elixirs and mega elixirs, which are in very short supply in the game. Uh, but I do turn into good things again at the Colosseum, so people sometimes use it for those on, on various enemies. So there you go, that's Ragnarok. That's two pretty cool new pieces of gear for us. Believe it or not, this video, uh, my plan was just for this to be a, a little opening montage of a couple of little things. Uh, my main idea of what I want to do in this video is go to the final dungeon. I think I mentioned that at the end of the last one. So let's jump in and uh, head there at long last and find the Master Scroll. I'm quite excited to see this. Oh my god, that was only 13 minutes. Wow, much better. Do I go for another pair? I think I'll do one more pair, maybe. Yeah, I tried grinding for like another 20 minutes on a second pair, couldn't find it. So, <laughs> Colosseum, the other ones. All right, well, for this next adventure, let's uh, let's get in the airship. So I know a little bit about what's coming up. We're gonna go to the last dungeon of the game that's not Kefka's Tower. And um, I kind of know a few, of, I don't really know the layout or really what happens here, but I know the things of note about it. And one of the things of note is that most enemies in here are gonna have ridiculously high magic defense and auto reflect on them, a little bit like the Cultist Tower. So with all of that in mind, um, I'm thinking we're gonna bring physical guys. I'm thinking Cyan is awesome. I'm a little nervous. I don't know how dangerous this is going to be. You know, I'm a little bit nervous, but we'll go Cyan. We will go Setsa. So that as soon as I find this Master Scroll, because the Master Scroll item's in here somewhere. As soon as I get it, I can start throwing the dice with him. Uh, Locke, because he's new. And last but not least, we need another physical attacker. Do you know what? I'm going to do Umaro. Because I'm not sure what other plans I have for Umaro right now, to be honest. So this might be... Uh, 
Oh, and I think there's an item for him, Arrow. Yeah, this is perfect. Oh, my God. I've just done a really good thing here. I'm pretty sure there's an item for him. Do you remember I mentioned there's two items for him in the game? The other one's kind of crap. It causes him to cast a magic spell, even though he has low magic. Yeah, um... I think that's what we're about to do. So let's just verify here. Right, uh, Cyan does not have any gear on him. However, we do have the Miracle Shoes, right? Yes, the Miracle Shoes. So you can have the Miracle Shoes for, uh, look at this, marvelous shoes with a number of useful enchantments. Haste, protect, shell, and regen all at once. I really want four sets of these. It's going to be so good. Um, Genji Glove, Genji Armor, Dual Wielding, Samurai Swords. Cool. Next. We have Setsa, who's all set up. He's got the, ha the Hades Jit on, which I did to show off a bit of throw gill, but to be honest, we don't really need too much. Uh, a safety bit to put... No, let's just go Hermes Sandals again. Sniper Eye so that he never misses. Um, just throw in, roll in the fixed dice, I suppose. That's fine. Next, we have Lock with another Genji Glove. That's so he can dual wield knife attacks. And a Hyper Wrist, which is boosting his strength. But again, if we're going for a big haste setup, Mind you, that was my last my last one, right, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. And then finally for this adventure, we have Umaro with an auto-reflect ring that I probably want to take off. That was from the Cultist Tower. Let's give him... I don't know. Let's give him our new growth egg, I guess. So he gets to our nice high. No, let's give him the protect ring. Auto-protect seems pretty good. I don't know whether there's going to be much physical attacking going on. But yeah, all right. So with all of that said, where is this dungeon? Because if you look at the world map, we've we've been everywhere. I mean, really everywhere now. So where is it? Well, we need to go, and I like this. We, we've saved for the last. We're returning to Figaro Castle. Where the hell did I park the castle? <laughs> what, a, what a sentence that is. Where the hell did I park it? Was it in one of these deserts? That's not Figaro. Is this cave Figaro? I, you know what? I could actually just check on the queue menu here. Since we're struggling to land anyway, let's see. Figaro, Figaro Castle. Ah, it's up there. Of course, I was looking for a desert, and I thought that these trees might be it, but no, no, no. Okay, so we're all the way over here. There we go. So we parked the castle here. We can't land on the desert, can we? Or am I thinking of Seven? Yeah, we can't land on the, uh, the desert. I've actually been watching a friend play Seven the past little while, and it's wild. He's modded the hell out of the game, like completely modded it to a ridiculous level. Um, and you know, it's because this new part of the seven remakes come out. Actually, one of you guys, what's funny is before the cataclysm, it's funny, that's the word Guild Wars used, and it's actually the word that they use in this game as well. Before the cataclysm, a year ago, one of you guys left a comment uh, on one of these videos saying, um, you know, we were talking slightly about FF16 and whether it would be good. And I said at the time I wasn't excited about 16 because a lot of their recent projects had kind of flubbed and not really been too excited to me. One of you guys dropped a message saying, oh, no, no, I think there are lots of reasons to be excited about it. Um, I would be very curious to hear your take on that now, kind of, sir, uh, <laughs> because 16's obviously come out in the meantime. Okay, what we need to do, right, is... Oh, crap, I've just realised... Uh, I do want a specific party member here. Hold on. They all have lots of magic, resist, and reflect, but I want terror on my team. This is another rare example where if you bring a certain party member, you get some extra dialogue. Oh, sorry about all this wasted time, guys. I, I really do apologize. Let's let's go down and... Um, it's terror. We want to bring terror. There's a thing that terror will reflect on. Okay, so I think I throw lock away then. I think we have set, sir. We have Sun. No, 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 but Lock's new. We're going to throw Cyan away. Sorry, Cyan. There we go. So we get the Amaro stuff. We get the Terra dialogue. We get the Setsa with the dice. We get um, Lock with, with uh, you know, just being new and fancy. And I guess what I do then is we go back to Cyan. Wait, was that you there, Cyan? No, that was Lock. Shadow, Cyan. And sorry, dude. I know you were excited about those shoes. But you don't get to wear those shoes. <laughs> We're going to give Lock the shoes. Nice. There we go. Wherever they've ended up going back in up here. Uh, so good. All right. Now, what we want to do... My God, this, this is spinning in the mud here. Now, what we're going to do is head back on in. Can she Can she wear anything? Is there like a penetrate reflect thing? Some Final Fantasies have that as loot. I haven't really seen that in 6. You never know. We might be able to metamorph it off of something somewhere. Right. Into Figaro. And we want to drive the castle. And you guys were cryptic about this to me in the past. So where was it? It was let... We're going to be lost in Figaro again. Get ready, guys. This is the big theme of this LP. I think it was down here, wasn't it? 
one of these areas <laughs> where we're going to drive the castle. Not there. Oh, we're going to leave the castle. <laughs> and um, hopefully something will happen. I think maybe we have a chance for it to proc. Let me just try going downstairs straight away. And I feel like left was... Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to say go to Figaro. And he's going to pull the lever. And we get the cool animation. So I remember the way to the driver. And, oh, is, is this done it here, maybe? Here, he says, this stratum's unusually rough. We seem to be catching on something. And I might have got this message first time we did this in the World of Ruin. I really don't know. So we can choose to restart the engines, or we can just say stop here. And I'm going to say stop here, okay? And they don't really give you any indication anything's happened, but you guys left me a comment. You said, WP, go back to the prison cell? Oh, God. And we got to find that now. <laughs> and, you know, we were talking about this thing where it felt like there was something extra to do in the prison cells. Like, maybe maybe we were going to lock Kefka up in there or something. Didn't someone suggest Kefka because you should be in these cells or something? So, this is pretty hidden, I have to say, because, like... Well, this is just a straight-up engine room. This is where we fought the boss and all that, isn't it? And then we had a billion chests. Oh, my God, so good. In fact, how are we doing with chests here? Nine out of nine, one out of one? Do you know what, guys? I'm very near that achievement. I wonder, when we get all the chests in this place we're about to go to, and when we get all the chests in the final dungeon, will I get it? Did I get all the chests in the World of Balance? Was there, like, one little missable thing somewhere? I mean, probably, right? But damn, we're close. We, we, we might have a good shot at it. Okay, I'm probably going to cut. Do I cut? This is the question. Do you know what? Maybe I speed it up. So you can see my my wobbling around. The, wobbling, I was going to say roaming around. My wobbling around the castle. I think I've checked all these rooms in all these areas. I don't think this is the prison section. Until I get there. And that way, you don't have to wait forever. So I'll see you guys in a second. Maybe it's... I'm thinking maybe it's past the engine guy down here. Or up these stairs and down on the other side. Alright, okay, seriously. Seriously, stop speaking. I'll see you guys in a second. Oh, there you go. Oh, see, it's here. Okay, I think this is where we need to be. Yeah. Yeah, and this guy says, I think we all know who really deserves to be locked up in here. So, check it out. That's weird that he actually stood here face down like he was guarding it. This door is now open. I mean, how subtle is this? This is so subtle. Uh, the door is open. You can move on through. And there's, there's a dungeon here attached to the castle. Now, if I hit Q and we switch maps, it doesn't appear anywhere on the overworld map. But this is it. We are now in... It's, it's kind of a double dungeon, I guess. We're in the cave to the ancient castle. Ah. So I kind of like the idea of this. You know, this thing of Figaro moving and that. What if someone else had a castle that could move? That's a cool idea, isn't it? And, well, I guess that's the, the point. So six chests... Six items, and I am now completely blind. I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see what we've got. Well, this is a dead... Oh, no, it's not a dead end. Okay. It's so hard to move up there. Once again, the uh, game completely messing with my perspective here. So we've got a chest here. Now, I think some of these might be monsters in boxes. Okay, no, that's a high ether. <laughs> the good loot is from monsters in boxes. So naturally, I'm terrified. Figaro, lizard, and a devil. All right, let's roll some dice at that. Let's attack this one. Oh, God. Do I dare randomly cast black magic? I'm going to just test the waters with a fire. Oh, well, they're dying. Okay, no, they both have reflect. So what the hell is Terra going to do? I guess she has to cast off of herself. Maybe I give her the reflect ring then. And then I just bounce spells into them. And then lock there. We're going for this. Umaro. Oh, my God. Big roll. Oh, so good. Oh, this team's awesome. Look at all the buffs we have and everything as well. Oh, my God. So good. Okay, right. Terra, you are going to want... Oh, this means giving up the, the the double earrings. But, you know, there's nothing for it. Right. Uh, reflect ring. So, whenever I cue black magic, it's going to be just on her. And what this essentially means is I'm not going to have a choice anymore as to who I target. Because I can't AoE. Because that would mean everyone needs on reflect on my team. And I'm not going to do that. So I can only single target and it will just hit something random. So uh, also, you'll notice here, check it out. She's basically got everything. She hasn't got Bahamut, I suppose. So I guess we do Bahamut. What I was actually thinking here now at this point, because she has Ultima, right? Oh my god, can I reflect Ultima off of myself? I don't think so. Does Ultima penetrate reflect? Um, 
Like, I don't really need to do this. This is kind of better for MP or whatever. But there's actually an item I'll be going for very soon, which will give us... I can't remember if I already mentioned this, but the dinosaurs, that the, there's an extra dinosaur in the dinosaur forest we haven't fought yet. And they drop like one MP cost relics, and I really want them. I think you can do stuff at the Colosseum for them as well, which will mean we can just spam the hell. Like, we can like double cast spam ultimas and shit, right? Uh, for now, I don't know. All I was thinking of doing is just picking a an Esper for her that gives her magic on level up. At level up, that's that's HP. So who is it? Maybe maybe Valgarmander's surely magic. There you go, magic plus two. So I'm gonna put it back onto that. And for the first time, really, in a major way, we're actually gonna be like grinding the correct stat on the correct character as we play. I mean, is it grinding when you're first time in a dungeon? I'm so nervous of these boxes. Here we go. A wing edge. Wing edge. Let's see what that does. I should stop going to the equip menu for that stuff. I should just scroll down. Oh, it's another boomerang. It's our second wing, wing edge. Oh, yeah. Hold on. I was going to put double boomerangs on, wasn't I? Oh, my God. Dual wielding boomerangs. That's a much cooler idea for Locke. Hell, yeah. Okay. Very happy with that. Right. So, we've got three doors. Two chests done already. Three doors. I guess we'll go left to right. That's my instinct. Oh, God. And there's another place to the left. There's another chest there. To get to that, we're going to have to go downstairs. Oh, I love this lighting effect here as we walk through this. I guess that's been used in the game quite a lot, but it looks really prominent here. A death tarot. Okay, so this um, is another Setzer weapon. Uh, they're basically, I think, um, I think they actually work like darts. Obviously, it's got the it's, they're tarot cards, right? And it's got the card icon, so maybe not. I, I really thought that they were going to be like darts. Let's just equip them. They're not going to be as good, but we'll try them out. I guess, in a way, these are supposed to be really good. I mean, they're not his final item, but they're probably like his penultimate or whatever. Attack plus 187, and they may cast death upon striking an enemy. That's kind of a cool idea for like a card throwing weapon, because when I think of tarot cards, I always think of death. Uh, you know, like, oh, you got death, but it's not bad. It just means change. Ooh. You know, I've got a story. When I was growing up, um, one of my parents was really into, like, psychic and magic stuff for a little while. Like, in the idea. But basically, I think doing it on behalf of one of my nans, who was much more superstitious. Anyway, we used to go to... Um, oh, God. Where should I, what should we do here? Oh, we're going to cast Blizzarga, I guess, on ourselves, And then maybe hit the Uno. That thing looks crazy, by the way. Um, and I'll always remember, we went to like one of these weird... I, I basically think they're all fraudsters as an adult. But we went to this uh, convention place. Yeah, that looked like a dart, didn't it? He did the spin and the throw. That was so cool. And uh, they, they would do like tarot card readings for you, if you like. And I remember we were waiting to go do one. You know, just sort of like a fun afternoon hour. <laughs> and uh, the person before us ran out screaming and crying. And clearly had been told... Um... Is the fight over? Okay, good. Oh, my God. I've read multiple times on the wiki that there's, like, bugs and ways for fights to just go on forever. And I was really scared with that auto-death effect there. Yeah, the person before us just went, like, screaming and crying, running out early. I guess because they'd been told, you know, like, Ooh, someone you care about will be harmed soon. Ooh. And these people were taking it really seriously. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. That's the story, really, I guess. But that will always stick out in my mind. I like all these animations here. The double boomerangs is fucking awesome. The uh, the new darts is awesome. Umaro's just kind of slamming away there, you know. Terra's doing what she can to work around this. This is actually kind of cool, you know. I could have, like, metagamed it and not took any spellcasters. But doing it this way, we get a bit of story and we get to see a bit more of the mechanics. So that's quite nice. Um, now, how the hell do I get up to the middle door? You can't get up to the middle door. And the left door was just a dead end, right? I'm not a fool for coming back through here. What is the idea of these things? I'm really... I, the thing that sucks here is I can't press Q to auto battle because if I do that, it will proc her spell just on, on the enemy, I think. And I think that'll be a bad idea. We could obviously test with everyone exactly who has Reflect and stuff. That's one of the things I really like about the newer games, like the really I enjoyed on 10. You could dedicate to your gear auto scan on some weapon and... Um, uh, and because you put that on your equipment, you know, the, the fights just flow much better. You can just look around. What health has this guy got? What's he weak to? What's his current status effects? Oh, God, this is a dead end as well. Oh, no, there, maybe we can walk on the left here. Here we go. Let's go. And this is a monster in a box. 
Scary, but also potentially big rewards. Oh, shit. It's the Master Tombri. Oh, my God. I think I've heard about this. Okay. Uh, well, we killed Tombris before. Can you imp this one? This guy, speaking of 10 there, this guy is a lot like the one from 10, I think. Like, he literally slowly walks towards you. He counters with Traveler like he spins the lantern every time you hit him with the counter. It's the same thing that if you watch my 10 playthrough, he's doing that as well. And then when he gets really close, he, like, does the shank attack and he steps back and then you get a little while. I'm going to try and imp him. Is he immune? Oh, I shouldn't have set... I uh, missed. He might... Should... Is he... Can I ultimate him? Can he reflect Ultima? There you go. See, he countered with Traveler and just killed Umari there. So we have to be really careful here. Do I have... I do have a Rise. Nice. Oh, and we have Re-Raise. We are oh, so good having all the spells. I could try to steal from him as well. Ah, oh, she hit for 999. Nice. Okay, hold on. She might be dead because Traveler. Yeah, okay. So I think we just spam a Rise on Umaro and Terra while she ultimates and Umaro just does whatever he like. Oh my god, he has barrier change. <laughs> well, that's okay because Ultima is typeless and therefore not a problem. This is a bit of a shame because we're not going to see the cool new weapons. Oh, he didn't counter. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's that Thundarker all about? Oh, that's him casting it on us. Oh shit, this is, this is really scary. Okay, hold on. I shouldn't just stand here doing nothing. I should Kuraga... Oh, but that's going to heal him because of Terra's Reflect. And she doesn't need the heal anyway. So what I should do is re-raise. Oh, my God. If I re-raise him via Reflect. I literally, it won't let me target him. If I re-raise him, surely that would break the game. Oh, guys. I think. Now, I'm only guessing here. I think you're not allowed to target him with re-raise because, like, the devs don't want you casting it on bosses that have scripted death effects and stuff like it would break things. So I think it's impossible to re-raise your enemy. So therefore, I think it penetrates reflect because they don't want you being able to do it via reflect either. So I'm going to try to re-raise Terra here and I think it's going to go through. Or it will reflect and then say miss. You ready? And here we go. Yes, it worked. Oh, I feel like a genius unless it's going to reflect afterwards. Uh, it's probably safer to... No, it's just a good idea to just do whatever. Okay. Well, I'm surprised he cast Thundaga on us. I wonder how much health he has. Master Tonbury, this is really good. The best Tonbury of the whole franchise is definitely, again, the Tens Don Tonbury. That's just such a hilarious name. Actually, mind you, I like the whole King Tonbury thing. They got some good Tonburys in the MMO. Oh, he's dead already. Oh, okay. Well, he was actually easier than the other ones, I think. Well, I don't know. We're a lot stronger now. Considering the imp strategy, he's not stronger than the other ones. Bye-bye, Master Tombri. We got the cool uh, dialogue and everything. Zero AP, zero XP, plus a Gladius. Is that it? That's not it. Is that it? A dagger blessed with the power to smite evil foes. Oh, my God. That's a big weapon for Locke, though. Jesus. But I don't want to swap, actually. Oh, my God. The wing edges are so good as well. Oh, I thought we were going to get something amazing from that. Okay, well, I guess let's uh, just do a quick little cure there and quick save and head on through. Okay, so actually, I just read on Wiki, the Gladius is a kind of cool item. It is the strongest dagger. The only one in the game is dropped by this Master Tonbury, or, get this, the only other way to get one of these is to bet the Ultima weapon at the Colosseum. That's how exclusive it is. It does holy damage, so, you know, it's got that perk, but it is ultimately outclassed by the better, like, character-specific weapons. So, you know, it's nice to have in our inventory. I doubt I'll use it much. Okay, please tell me this is the way. Yeah, okay, there is. Right, and then this will be the middle door, which will get us nothing. There wasn't even a chest here. Absolutely nothing there. That's weird. And you know what? The door animation is so cool. We haven't really seen that for a long time, have we? They're nearly always doing this door with the weird circles that I said. Uh, uh, some of the doors in Little Big Adventure are a little bit like that as well. Okay, so I guess just same thing again here. Let's head up a... Uh, well, no, do you know what? I'm going to see. If I ultimate them, will it just penetrate? I don't want to blow up all of our MP if we're going to have a crazy boss fight soon. Yeah, I think that's just going to go... Oh, it did barely any damage. Oh, no. It did like a little hit and then a big hit. Weird. All right, Setsa learned Poisoner. We've got to keep an eye on like if people are maxing stuff out. So Setsa's finished that now. So he can go for... Wait, why does it say... 
No one's on Valagarmanda. Terra should be on Valagarmanda. Did I mess that up somehow? Huh, did I not actually assign it? That's crazy. All right, well, whatever. I love, by the way, that Terra is my first one that has learned all the espers, basically. And she's half esper. It's a good little uh, good little thing. I definitely planned for that, everybody. All right, let's do Bahama, I guess, for Setsa. I don't think we're ever going to be casting Flare with him, but, you know. Oh, I, I just realized they put Flare on Bahamut, whose iconic move is Mega Flare. Oh, my God. I didn't realize that's very cool as well. All right, so we can go left here. So we've now explored quite a lot. It's like a long, winding path. Uh, okay, so since we have Ultima queued, I can just press Q. Oh, oh, oh no, I don't want to do that. No, 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 Setsa. Well, I mean, that's kind of okay. I get, oh, <laughs> These selfish guys, they're just cowards, you know. It's interesting, these guys are degening. They're like the starving mobs on the continent above in the world of ruin. I know what some of you guys are thinking, by the way. You're thinking, WP, stop auto in the fights. It keeps screwing you over. You keep doing unanticipated stuff. Yeah, I know, but the quality of life, guys. You know, that's just a part of the risk. That's the mechanic. Oh, okay, we can get through here. Alright, look, all we gotta do is fix Setsa by make it and lock by making them both physically attack. There you go, and they went first. And now we just press Q. And we're all good. Nice, he's dead. I mean Ultima is overkill and she is destroying her MP. Look, she's down to 175 right now. What's this gonna take her to when she casts this? Look, and that's only hitting a single target. 95. Okay, yeah, no more Ultima. It's it's good, but we need to lower the MP cost somehow. Obtained an X potion. Oh my god, so many chests everywhere. And a Magicite Shard. We could throw a Magicite Shard and get a random Esper if we like. How are my chests doing? Six out of six. Okay, we've done everything. So now we come down this creepy looking hole here in the middle. And that's probably the cave to the ancient castle done. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> okay, well, hold on, hold on. Let's get a, a Terra Tent going. Terra Tent. That sounds like some kind of like Monster Hunter boss name, doesn't it? Oh my god, the model's different on her. She's got like a big old ribbon up there. Oh, they're not just recolors. Also, let's play as Locke. Locke Dungeoneering. Feel, it just feels right, you know? Oh, no, that is the end. That was just like a transition screen, I guess, and an opportunity for us to save. Okay, so where are we now? We are at the Ancient Castle, which has four chests and an item. Ugh, I'm going to have to press E on random stuff. And this feels very Domish, I guess. All right, here we go. What is this place? This is so much like the Omega Dungeon style thing, you know. Oh, we get a flashback. Is this? A, I think it is. We've gone sepia. It's definitely a flashback. Oh god, they're getting nuked. Oh, is this from the original War of the Magi, like way, 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 way ago? It's an Esper that caused us to forget about magic for years and all that. It's an Esper attack. Let loose our Espers. Oh, it so is. This is the site of a thousand year old battle. See, a thousand years. Oh, Lord Odin. Oh, so I didn't know this already. I must be honest. Odin. We're going to get Odin in here. Okay. Remember I said that we're going to get two espers at once in this episode at the, at the end of the last one, I think. Yeah, that's because Odin is here. And as I've mentioned many times, Odin can be upgraded. Um, Lord Odin is the only esper left to us. Has he recovered from his injuries? Oh, I guess I've kind of spoiled a little bit here. Does it matter? We have no other choice. We must leave this final battle in Odin's hands. So, why that's a little bit of a spoiler is, I think they're trying to conceal from us, but Odin's an esper. Like, the king of this castle was not human, it was an esper. Uh, no, it's just I didn't register this very quick little sentence here. They did just say, Odin is the last esper left to us. A city destroyed during the War of the Magi? Dot, dot, dot. No, no, you can see him here. Look, look, he looks like an esper. Zanetsukun! Oh, and he cuts them all in half. This is cool. That's very... Oh, that's such a good effect. They even glue white a little bit for a second there. We get generic ghost enemy. Some kind of enemy esper, I suppose. Man, they made like a whole overworld sprite for him and everything. Zanetsukun! This is a well, much better dungeon than the others so far. You know, we get a proper like cutscenes and story and everything. <laughs> the animation's amazing. It looked like he was wiping his face. It's a shame that they couldn't find a way in these pixel games to have, like, cinematic boss battles um, in the overworld. 
considering how good the sprites are and stuff. And look at 16, as I just mentioned. You know, the, having massive cinematic battles was a huge thing about that. Impressive. I never thought, like, spectacle stuff, really. I never thought you would be able to turn me to stone. Oh, he got petrified. And in his last, his last gasps, his final breaths, as his body turned to stone foot first, rising up, he accepted defeat. And rather than crying or showing fear or anger, he, he, he complimented his opponent and called them impressive. So is there something that can petrify us in here? There's a legend that tells of an ancient battle between the Esper Odin and a powerful ma magus. I always hate that word. I never know whether I want to say magus or not. It took place in the great hall of a castle. Okay, well, this is it. And, you know, all that dialogue's kind of genericized. Who, oh, we got an achievement for visiting here. Um, who do we think is actually most appropriate to talk about that? Possibly Terra already. It, the way that cutscene was structured, it, we made it look like it was locked. Okay, good. Terra got all of her MP back from those Ultimas. Here we are back attacked. I like the background here. This is so cool. That's like the city of Vilcambamba where you jump into the water. That's amazing. We've got pipes and things and stuff in the background. So it's a little bit techy. Okay, we'll throw the boomerangs. We'll throw some fixed dice. And to be honest, I think it's over, isn't it? I don't even need to do anything. Yeah, look at all these auto death effects. And these things aren't undead, so it's actually working. Man, I would have thought that auto death would not be very good at this point And like stop would be better. As I was talking about before, but no. Okay, so I will try the right hand door first. And there's a chest. And we get the Punisher. What is the Punisher? The Punisher is um, a, a rod. A rod that draws MP from its wielder to deal critical hits. Maybe something fun for Strago or Realm? Finally, we have a rod that's not the holy rod, but I think the optimize button will continue to <laughs> put it on. You know, it's weird. They made a lot of gear exempt from the optimize button in this game. Um... But they did it with the Holy Rod. The, to me, it seems like is the one thing that they really should have. Okay, let's go with an attack. So look, there's a Samurai there, a Surianda, and Coco. This is this is one of the women. If we, if you um, metamorphize them, you got a chance to get a ribbon. But I think they're supposed to be quite dangerous. Here again, I'm just gonna wait with Terra because I don't know. Oh my God, he crit! Wow, Umaro. He's going ham here. All right, let's go leftmost now. I'm basically just trying to work my way toward the door. We get another chest. How many was it again? Four chests. Oh, monster in a box. Potentially something good. The Samurai Soul. Okay, there's a lot of trivia about this guy. Are we already dead with that crazy AoE there? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> That's barely any damage. So, yeah, um... I've got it paused here, obviously, with still. There's a lot of trivia about this guy. You know how we got Throw Gill with Setzer? This guy actually just natively uses Throw Gill, believe it or not. He also has some abilities that you only see if you cast Confuse on him. So I'm going to try that out. Apparently, Confuse is a really good way of winning this. The thing is, I have Umaro who's going to keep snapping him out. So I don't know how well that's going to go, really. I'll throw the dice with Setzer. Like, he's vulnerable to Confuse. This is one of his only vulnerabilities. And it's a way of, like, kind of being safe. The other thing you can do is you can have Realm sketch him. Uh, uh, control him, sorry. Fake Massage Realm. She can use Control. And then you're basically just safe. Um, the other thing he's vulnerable to, he's one of those bosses, and I always love this. There's just something about, I think a good Final Fantasy boss fight has, like, a setup phase where you're putting protection, regen, stuff like that, and bio on them, reducing their ma their vulner uh, their defenses. And then, like, a DPS, like, hitting kind of phase, and then, you know, the periods where they unleash big attacks and you heal a bit. You know, I like that sort of back and forth. I haven't done that much in 6. But, yeah, he's vulnerable to bio, and you can just put bio and confuse on there, and I think just sit there and win. Um... But yeah, we'll see what we've got. I don't know whether he has a lot of big insane counters or something based on that. Double boomerang attack. And I think this is the only thing in the game, by the way. The only time you see a samurai soul. Unless there's a thing about it somewhere out in the, um, the, uh, the Colosseum. Lightning scroll. That was quite a lot of damage. I think Ultima is the best choice here. Locke is the next best choice. And the best selection for healing this AoE damage is Setzer. So I'm going to do it this way and he's going to cure her. I, he should have cured Argid actually. Hopefully that's enough to fully heal Terra. Let's see. I feel like our player... Oh, he's dead already. Wow. Uh, I feel like our player HP levels are too low in this game. Like we're, we're hit, all, our, all the numbers are so big and our HP is so low but the damage they do also is really low. 
Like, I want to see bigger numbers at this point. There you go. Set to learn Flare from him. We get 5 AP. No XP. 30,000 gil. And we get the Master Scroll. Oh, we get the Master Scroll. We get the Master Scroll. It's finally time, guys. <laughs> Can't wait. All right. Do we get rid of the Sniper's Eye or the Hermes Sandals? Oh, what do I want to compliment this with? What's this like? I'll have to think about that between this video and the next one. And of course, you can do this on a bunch of different characters, guys. The Master Scroll is not just good for Setsa. Again, you can do Thief Knife spam with Lock. You can do all kinds of stuff. I'm doing Setsa because, as it says here, Proof of a Warrior's Weapon Mastery allows the bearer to attack four times per turn. The thing is, it should be lowering your damage with that. But because we are using the fi So I'll, I'll keep the Death Tarot for now, okay? Just so we can see what it's like to throw loads of darts, which is also a cool fantasy. And then I think we'll swap. So there's the Master Scroll. It's from this Samurai Soul Fight, I guess, in the leftmost room at the start of Figaro Castle. Also, you can swap off of Bahamut now. Bahamut's actually kind of good, I guess, because he doesn't need strength. All I want to do is give him speed or health, right? I guess? Well, we don't have anyone for speed yet. Maybe we have a speed plus one person somewhere out there. Maybe. Um, but I'll just keep him on Bahamut for now, I guess. Cool stuff. Now, that heal never went off, did it? So let's do this. Once again, I'm kind of thinking, these auto saves at every little transition kind of ruin it. <laughs> oh, this is both doors. They're both the same room. Of course they are. Huh. Okay, so we just have the this area to go now. Like, I'm thinking, do I really need to heal there? Is it really important? We've got two out of the four chests. We haven't found the item. Now, there's a chance that the item, as I've already said, that we're going to get Odin here. Maybe we find his Magicite or something. I'm guessing we'll find him petrified. There you go. We literally do. Oh, what? The... What? Oh, my God. What is that? Is that a hidden switch? Just there randomly on the floor. I heard something about a hidden room here. I didn't know that it would be that that's crazy the exclamation mark is that a remaster thing the exclamation mark is that kind of ruined it what the hell is this a lunatis all right here we go go set sir yeah two boomerangs pretty cool so yeah obviously the other thing is if you dual wield and then you do the master scroll you get eight attacks right oh that's probably what i want to do how do we get a second fixed dice though doesn't he only have the one fixed dice what's going on oh i was queued into attack i guess oh it's dead <laughs> Oh my god, that was that was very weird. Okay, I don't know. I think we hit a switch and we opened a door somewhere. Um, which is kind of annoying. Because I, I would have rather explore, see what all the limits were, and then reveal a secret <laughs> room. If we've revealed a secret room, I might just go stumbling in there straight away. Or maybe we need to do that to help him with his petrification. Let's see. Oh god, is this a boss? Oh, he just disappeared. Odin crumbles, leaving behind a shard of Magisite. Oh, so is it the pickup? No, we already have it, don't we? Unless that counted. Let's see. It didn't count. Wait, did we get the Magisite or not? Oh, we did. What? It didn't say acquired Odin or anything. All right, cool. So Zanetsuken, we just saw him get do that in the cutscene. I'll tell you what then, actually. See, I kind of wanted to bring Cyan here, because Cyan feels appropriately themed with some of this stuff. So Odin... Cuts down all enemies, causing instant death. Zanetsuken. For his abilities, we get... So, Meteor is kind of classically another really big black magic. Um, not to be too spoilery or anything. But in the very next game in this anthology, in 7, they went in a really big way with Meteor. It's kind of a small thing here in this game. But Meteor... Wait, is it Meteor or is it Comet? They're technically different, aren't they? I don't know. Anyway, the next game kind of went with this. is such a pointless comment if it's Comet, technically. Anyway, what we care about, I will learn Meteor, obviously. We'll show the animation of. But what I care about here is this. At level up, speed plus two, which is pretty good. So we'll give him, we will give him Odin, actually. There you go. You can have Odin. And then what we want is probably, ultimately, Genji Glove instead of Hermes Sandals. And then Dual Wield. The fixed dice plus another fixed dice. Isn't that the full... But where do I get the second fixed dice from? That'll be something to look up. Okay, so we got three doors. My instinct is to go left, but I also think that might be the secret one that just opened. But also, these are clearly doors. Oh, no, but they won't take us anywhere. Was this the secret? Oh, God, I don't know. I'm going to try the top right and then the bottom right and then the left. That just feels more natural to me. Back attack. Launcher. 
Oh my god, that did a lot of damage. Okay, boomerang it. And here we go. This should be four fixed dice. One turn. I'm not going to Ultima and steal his thunder. Oh, no, no, no. This is the darts. Okay, I'm going to Ultima then. As a machine, he's probably death proof. Also, it did barely any damage. And you see how low his hits were now, right? Like, he threw four of them. And so you can see, under normal circumstances, it's kind of a balanced item. You definitely want to use that item with, like, proc effects. Chance to steal, chance to condi, whatever. Because what you've done is, overall, you've done about the same amount of damage, but you've quadrupled your chances to get a proc. Or you can do it with this insanity, the fixed dice, which just bypasses the whole damage calculation. Okay. I'm happy to get random encounters like that, by the way, because it means they'll start showing up on the Velt. Oh, two chests. Is it going to be a monster in the box? Blizzard Orb! Ha ha ha! Nice! Another thing. So here's Umaro's interesting yet somewhat useless item. So the gauntlet... Wait. No, not the gauntlet. He's not wearing the thing he needs. It's the Berserker's ring he should have been wearing this whole time. Oh my god. Where is it? Okay, the Berserker's ring... Equip on a Yeti and see what happens. This is the amazing thing that cause, unlocks a new ability for him. He throws his allies with the Berserker's Ring. He also has another piece of unique gear. This is the one other thing. It's the Blizzard Orb. A dark, swirling orb that absorbs ice, negates fire damage. So he goes like full Yeti mode, I suppose, um, uh, with his cold adaptation. And it says equip on a Yeti to see what happens. So we get some resistances. It gives him a tiny bit of magic. Magic plus five. So clearly the devs are trying to fix this issue where it's basically crap because his magic is usually low. But it's like, it's not enough. And they could have made this number much bigger and made it work right and you could turn him into a caster. But what this will do is this will unlock a new spell for him. Instead of throwing enemies, he'll do something. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why don't you equip both at once for the ultimate Umaro, like thematic Umaro? I might do that in a second, but I'll just do the Blizzard Orb first for now because I don't want to dilute, like, the skill pool or whatever. I want to show you the animation, and I don't want him to waste his turns throwing and ending fights too early, if that makes sense. So we'll just do the one for now. And I do want to show it off, but again, unfortunately, I think it's regarded as a bit, uh, a bit poopy. Are we get a gold hairpin. We've had plenty of gold hairpins before, haven't we? Yeah. That's like protection defense or death defense, was it? Uh, sorry, um, petrification defense, which would be cool if we're about to fight a petrification boss. No, oh no, this is half MP cost, the gold hair pin. Of course it is. Yeah, I was confusing myself with gold needles. You know, the items you throw to cure stone or petrify. Oh man, actually, did I talk about that? Because I thought we farmed for that somewhere. Or maybe I got that in one of my grind sessions. Anyway, there you go. And we're going to get a better thing for MP cost later. That would actually be okay on Terra right now, but you know. As with the soul of the master. Gold hairpin plus soul of the master would allow her to double cast ultima at half MP cost. So it would be the price of one ultima, but you get two. Yes, we'd lose the earrings, but ultima is so strong anyway. It's probably not a big deal. Okay, there is a book encrusted with glittering gems here. The Queen's Diary. I have fallen in love with Odin. It is a forbidden love, I know, but the flames of passion obey not rule or reason. Every time I think of that noble man, my heart flutters and fans the flames yet more. And who could rightly fault it? When the fighting ends, I shall tell him. I must. So this is a woman. This is the queen who is in love with an esper. Okay. So this is another cross-human uh, esper interspecies romance. Interspecies, is that the right word? I mean, look at them. The espers are insane. Oh, we got to summon Odin, by the way, to fight and actually see him. Um, so this is a lot like Terra's heritage. And I think, yeah, because she's in our party here, we get this. Here you go. This is, the, this is it. Love between a human and an esper. There you go. I mean, you're getting all the details here in this LP. <laughs> so that's a, like a hidden little extra thing. Um, for what it's worth, sometimes you get dialogue when people aren't there, but have been recruited nonetheless. Like, remember when we got Gao? I think a lot of people could contribute to that. They didn't even have to be in the party. They just needed to be, you know, on the airship at least. Uh, but yeah, so there you go. So that's Terra, and she seems sad or reflecting on it in some way. Is that the, the, the secret switch down there? So let's go the other way. And let's get in a fight so I fight Odin. Sorry, let's so I summon Odin. Here we go. This Lunatis isn't going to know what's hit him. Oh, we're going to be quick, though, because Umaro, no, Umaro, no, oh, no. Oh, is it still alive? Odin. 
Here we go. Zanet Stukan! And he's riding the horse, the Dark Knight on the horse. He's so cool. I think he's an awesome... Uh, in the MMO, they were like really late with Odin and it's really easy to miss his quest and they didn't really do too much with him. I mean, he has special designation for being easily missed, I guess, but then... Um... Oh god, okay, so we're behind that chest now, which is already open. And there's nothing in here. Oh, we could Xanax Sook in all of these and possibly kill them all at once. So what is this? As long as they're vulnerable to death, Odin can just end it straight away. He just runs them down. Look at that. Beautiful. And the fight ends and we get XP and we get Gil. Pretty good. So what is the purpose of this place then? I don't know. Nothing, I guess, just to throw us off. If that was the secret door that I opened, and then it's just a dead end. I'm going to be very weirded out about that. Can he Zanetsuka in the armored weapon? Let's see. Odin, go. How much have we actually mega flared with Bahamut? Oh, we just took we just took Bahamut off. Let's, let's Ifrit. I'm going to go on an Esper casting spree here. Like, why not? So there you go. So that's Odin. Let's put um, Bahamut onto lock. Here you go, because no one's using him right now. And we can get a bit more of that animation. I like this. They actually seem to have created a lot of enemies that are vulnerable to Zanetsuken right when you get the Esper. Ancient Castle B1. Well, we're just looking for one item now. Oh my god, oh god, it's one of the dragons. Oh, I'm gonna have to get back here to fight one of the dragons? Oh, that's gonna be ahead of an episode. Oh, and speaking of the queen, or was she just a princess, one of those? Can we get a fight? Anyone? I think encounters are disabled in this area. Okay, here she is. Let's speak to her with terror. Oh, <laughs> it wants to be in front. Even look, I kind of like doing that, you know? Like, if I stood behind, the devs have actually had to code a little bit of parthing for every contingency, so I kind of like... I enjoy making use of it, you know, where most players wouldn't. Even the so it's like that 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 dev work had value, you know. Uh, even the queen was turned to stone. Yeah, both of them were, but that's preserved them. So can we restore them both and watch them make love? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, from the stone. Uh, sorry, from the stone. Is that a tear? Oh my God, we're doing the Pokemon thing. Odin's magicite surges with newfound power. Odin becomes Raiden. Oh my god, there's not a boss in here. I can't believe that. There's not actually a boss. What? I thought we were going to have some kind of big old fight. I mean, there's that boss. Should I try to kill that dragon? Do you think I can do it? I wonder what element it is. I'm now realizing that one looks like Spyro again. Maybe they don't have too many colors for the overworld, even though there are actually lots in the thing. Should we try and fight that dragon? Uh, hold on, hold on. Before I get too distracted here. Um, right, yeah, so we just upgraded Odin. So the, the, the game here, okay, is Odin was there. And um, I guess you're supposed... It's supposed to be like a mega secret, that switch, which I just stumbled on and found there. I don't know if in the original... Someone, let me know in the comments if in the original version of the game you could see that button. Um, but so yeah, basically, uh, he upgrades into Raiden. And as Raiden, I suppose what we're supposed to imagine is this world before too many video game guides and internet information. A lot of players would come here, get the Esper and leave, not knowing inches away was a whole other upgrade. Kind of another hallmarky thing for this franchise, right? Secrets within secrets. So I know it seems really weird that you get an Esper and then another one suddenly and they're really close together. But I think that secret was supposed to be harder to find. The speed should upgrade as well to like speed plus two. We were already at speed plus two, so is that what that patch did? Uh, so it's kind of, it was questionable. This used to become strength, and the patch has changed it, I think, right? This used to, so you wouldn't get the speed bonus at all. You'd, it would end up being strength, and, and it kind of sucked. So if you wanted max stats, you couldn't upgrade. Uh, but I've just, I, obviously, I have no problem upgrading. He has Shinzanetsuken. Cleaves all enemies in two, causing instant death. Same thing. I guess just a different animation. But the spell he teaches you is amazing. This thing here. This is like quick hit from 10. Allows the target... Well, sort of. Allows the target to select two actions. It's like you get a double turn. By each turn by stopping time for everyone else. So it's got kind of an interesting mechanic, I think, where like... 
every you do your you queue in your first turn and then everything freezes until you queue in your second. And yeah, I think therefore if you do a Soul of Thamasa relic uh, build and then you teach that character quick, I think you can quick double cast, quick double cast maybe or something. Kind of mental. And you can see the multi hits really coming in here. I really want to try and fight this dragon. Let's equip. So Odin's gone. So actually me spamming Zanetsuke in there was very, very good. Because you wouldn't have seen it otherwise very much. Look at that. It was one room away. I thought we were going to have a fight. And we could maybe use the Esper on that. How am I even going to get out to trigger the autosave? The dragon is being horrifying. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Set, so you have fixed dice. You have master scroll. Okay, we can see what element it is. And... Oh, it, it seemed to have despawned there. Imagine if you could only kill the dragons the first time you saw them. Oh, God. What am I doing? Level 70. Holy shit. It's the blue dragon. Okay, so like we can equip water shields, for example, right? Is that going to auto-kill us all? Oh, we survived. <gasps> we survived. Oh, I probably have to deal with the reflect ring because I can't AOE cure at the moment. All right, let's trance it up. Let's attack. Status effects changed. Oh, my God. I can't believe I'm doing this. But my plan is for the next episode to be doing these anyway. So, there you go. Double boomerang. That's okay. There's like 2k damage. We probably want to be hitting 999s each time, right? Well, there we go. So, and then we can do... Oh, I should put the soul of the master on it. Oh, he's doing the dice. Look, 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 look. Nice. Okay. Ultima. Uh, I'm going to re-raise Terra. Umaro is just going to keep... Oh, Umaro has got his crappy snowball ability. We basically our two damage carries are Terra and Setsa. Um, Umaro is just oh he's dead already. Oh, this is so doable. Oh, I'm actually a little. I've I kind of got blue balls. I was just getting going there, you know. <laughs> it's over. Well, this must be how many women across the world feel. Feel <laughs> most nights. Um, oh, is that it, Suken? Okay. Oh, what happened? There was a message and I tabbed past it because I was trying to see what the item was. Shit, what did that say? It probably said something like seven dragons remain, I think. Wow, we get the Zanetsuken, a sword that may randomly dispatch an enemy in one hit. So another incredibly strong sword. I'll probably put that onto Cyan when we get him back. In fact, actually, if I just go optimize here. Here, where are you? Cyan. Um, and I, yeah, and we hit optimal. Yeah, the Zanetsuken will go on him. So it's a very, very good sword. Um, it's not actually a samurai sword, I think. The uh, the game, though, obviously, is you can get the, the ultimate weapon. Uh, not the ultimate weapon. You, well, yes, you can get the ultimate weapon. But you can get the um, the uh, the Lightbringer and, and the Ragnarok sword and all that stuff, uh, which would be better as far as the best sword. Anyway, so cool. Um, that's it, I think. Wow. Oh, my God. We killed the dragon. I sh probably should have been killing them as I was going now, actually. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, so that is this dungeon done. What I want to do here is see Umaro use his, like, frosty thing. And I also want to summon... I want to use Shin Zanetsuken. So here's Raiden. Umaro, you got just a few seconds left. Before, uh, you know, we can cure Bahamut as well. It's not going to matter. All right, you missed it, Umaro. we got to see his snowy attack. It might have happened already in the background of one of these fights. And I just happened to miss it because we were talking about other stuff. Yeah, it did actually. One of the earliest fights right after I equipped it, if you caught it, he has already snowstormed. It took all the willpower in the world for me here in editing not to immediately edit in one of these sections and point it out. But hey, it's back there somewhere. And that would be a little bit of a shame, but you know. Right, you gonna cast it this time? I didn't even really appreciate the animation there. Was it the same? Diffractive laser. Oh my god, oh my god, we're dying. Okay, uh, Terra, do you want to just kill him, please? Yeah, and so, like, if you are losing both the earrings... Oh god, did we just wipe? Oh my god, the armoured weapon, more deadly than the ultimate weapon. Uh, I think I have to flee. Okay, <laughs> we got out, we got out, it's okay, and look... Uh, lock can arise and everything. Are you gonna... Go on, Amaro, try and use your blizzard thing. Let's see what you got. Go on. Oh, he's gone with a slam. Oh, I was going to say, if he managed to win. Oh, it missed. <laughs> if he just managed to slam and get it straight away, that would have been awesome. Diffractive laser again. 
and you're dead. But he did a, he did a good bit of surviving there. All right, we're out. So abilities lock. You know how when we booted back to the screen there, we were still playing as Terra, even though she's dead? It would have been cool if there was a little bit of code in there, which is that if the player is dead in the party, you can't walk around as them on the overworld, and it would, you know, it should have snapped us to Locke there, because Locke was the one that fled and stayed alive. Okay, let's just wait and see Omaro, and uh, in the meantime, get another Shinzanetsuken going. Oh my god, these things are really deadly! Did I equip the wrong thing on him? No, I didn't. Slam is his basic thing. Oh my god. Okay, it's the same thing. It's just a absolutely crazy, flashy-looking Esper now. Yeah, as for the story as to why... Why he upgrades because he sees the tear of the, of the lady. I guess because she's immortal. She doesn't get a free pass, you know. As in, he can survive the petrification process and still exist. She actually was killed by it. And now, I don't know what, he cries and becomes a new kind of knight. Again, I feel like there might be some sort of cultural story here. Some established idea of a knight turning from one thing to another. I don't know. But this whole Odin upgrading thing is done in multiple Final Fantasies, as I mentioned before. And yeah, watching this back, it really feels like we probably could have had a boss fight against the big creature that did all of this to them. No, and yet we didn't. Was it cut out? Is that why it had no decent overworld sprite? They just went with the ghost in the end? Oh my God, this is kind of deadly. Oh, there you go, snowstorm. There it is, snowstorm, 2000 damage. That's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. But obviously, if you, if you do throw and you throw, if he throws lock dual wielding, the Lightbringer and the Ultima Weapon, which, by the way, is another cool combo that, you know, you could have unlocked if you did it the other way. If he does that, he's going to do so much more damage. I mean, at that point, we're talking about so much overkill damage. You know, it doesn't really matter, right? We're at the cap of 909. There's no break damage limit here, for example. Um, the Snowstorm will never be able to keep up. But there you go. That's Snowstorm. And uh, that's the end of the episode, guys. So thank you very much for watching. The story down here at the ancient castle let me just check four out of four chests zero of one items oh where's the item oh it's here it's here it's in this bucket aha nice oh my god i wasn't doing commentary there because i was i was about to scan the whole goddamn place all right it was an xe thing in this bucket almost missed that well there you go so that's it guys that's the end of the episode the ancient castle um so, by the way, for what, for what it's worth, what we have seen now is every single Esper in the game... Raiden's at the end. That's wild. Uh, this obviously was Odin, but it gets removed from the list. There is one more. Who is that Esper, you might be wondering? Well, I will explain all in the next episode where... Um, we get really into the, near the end of the series here, guys. As far as I know, next episode, I'm going to do Colosseum stuff. And we are going to hunt down all of the dragons and uh, and get this Esper. So I will explain all of that uh, on the next part. That will be the, the big end game content. And we'll be done and immediately wishing that we were playing the GBA edition where there'd be a bunch more to do afterwards. But yeah, so thanks very much for watching, guys. That's in the next part. The one after that, I think we're climbing Kefka's Tower. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time.